Well, uh, good morning, Blue Troopers, and I thought I would knock out a quick video this morning, so I recorded it and went back to the computer, and this boom mic I'm using, uh, I don't know if it was a bad connection, but it had a loud pitter-patter noise in it throughout the entire video, so I'm out here reshooting it. So, anyway, what I thought I'd talk about today is something that uh, Mike Machat and I chatted on yesterday, and that was uh, the difference between two very different and famous aviation artist uh, Keith Ferris and uh, the late uh, Jack Linwood and Keith Ferris you've probably seen his artwork if you're into aviation at all he's uh, 91 years old and uh, I don't know if he's still doing any art but uh, he has put out numerous books and he's also famous amongst other things for uh, a giant mural he may have done more than one, but I know he did the giant mural of the B-17s at the Air and Space Museum, which I've seen many times, and a lot of other famous artwork. And he is a true artist in the sense that he's very meticulous, gets every detail right. He is very uh, well respected as arguably the, the, the grandfather of modern aviation art as we know it today. And on the other side of the spectrum, you have... Uh, the late Jack Linwood, who really doesn't call himself an artist, he used to refer to himself as an illustrator. And he did countless uh, uh, box arts, uh, primarily for Ravel, but for a lot of other people, and, and movie posters. Uh, Jack was extremely fast and did incredible work, including my favorite box art ever, the Ravel 132nd scale Mark 1 Spitfire. But, uh, and as you guys know, I finally yesterday acquired, uh, courtesy of Mike Machat, I uh, acquired a piece of uh, uh, Jack Linwood original comp, which is now one of my most cherished possessions in the world. But Mike had made a really interesting observation using a musical analogy, and that was Keith Ferris is a concert pianist, hits every note just right, where Jack... Uh, was a jazz musician who just needed an eight beat count. He could just go with the flow. But th these two uh, people also were doing something very different. You have Ferris making uh, museum quality artwork that's designed to represent something as, as uh, authentically as possible. Then you, you have Jack who was producing work that was designed to sell a product, whether it was a movie poster that got you to want to go in and see the movie, or a box art that got you to want to buy a model airplane. And trust me, I spent plenty of my money as a kid on Ravel kits and others because of Jack's artwork and the artwork of, uh, I'm sure, plenty of other people, uh, including uh, Cachetti and uh, Amendola and uh, uh, John Steele and a lot of others. So there's something to be said for these two artists, well, again, Jack referred to himself as an illustrator, but in my book, he's, he's still an artist. Uh, but uh, they had what you might call different mission statements. And that's why you have a, a very different look on the two of them. Both of them are fantastic. If somebody said, well, which one do you prefer? Well, I can't answer a question like that. That's like, what do I like better? You know, chocolate ice cream or vanilla ice cream? And... Uh, the main thing that I, that I took away from that conversation is that there are various art societies that these people are part of and it just like anything, music, uh, I, just anything you can think of, there are going to be different tastes. Now, I'm an omnivore. I, I like all of it. Everything brings something to the equation. I love artwork that it looks lifelike and real and I love artwork that is uh, uh, fantastical, and I like artwork that's sort of a blend between the two. It looks real, but there are some things on it that are not technically correct, but they just inspire the imagination because different art does different things. And this is one of the reasons I, I can't help but wonder if kit model sales did not go down when they started using pictures of the models instead of the artwork. I know the few of you have commented in the past that you actually preferred when they put the picture of the model on the box top because you could actually see what you're getting and, and from a commercial standpoint I could certainly understand that but some of you have also said no 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 by the way if the camera starts shaking the cat's running around the tripod okay she's over here now we should be safe so what does so my question of the day would be 
Well, hello, pumpkin. Yeah, come, come, come. You want to come up here? You want to come up here? No, you, you want you don't. What well, did you not do your fur today? You're not ready to be in front of the camera. You're not ready for your close up. Okay. So the the, uh, the question of the day is, and when you look at art, uh, I'm, I'm thinking particularly like you know box art, aircraft, aviation art, things like that, automobile art, that sort of stuff. What do you prefer? Do you prefer the almost photorealistic perfection, or do you prefer one that's a bit more, I, I guess the word would be fantastical perhaps, you know, where, where uh, certain colors and things are used just to sort of set a mood, the warmths and the cools and everything. It, it's not lifelike, but it's inspiring. And, and there's no wrong answer here. I'm just kind of curious. And of course, again, maybe you're like me, you like them both. And that's just sort of the question of the day. And I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Hope you get out later and get to cranking on that Felix stove. And in the meantime, you guys take care and model on. Are you happy now? Guys, I almost forgot. I want to give a quick shout out to the Sledge uh, Master. I did find the paintbrushes in the F-102 box. Uh, you guys may remember a while ago I was tearing the Tarvis apart looking for the paintbrushes that came in a box and I couldn't find them. And he sent me a message and said, hey, they're in the F-102 box and I opened it up and there they were. So thank you, Sledge Master.